people were still terrified of AIDS then. Um, lots of people didn't really even know what it, you know, know what it was. Uh, we just dealt with Rock Hudson not that long before that, um, but it was it was still it was still difficult. It was still incredibly difficult to get any information, especially accurate information. Um, I know that when we were doing the show, we had we had a medical we had a, a main medical advisor, and and then a man with AIDS who was also advising us on the on the story as we went. Um, it was so hard to get information that we sometimes it, it had to double and triple check because we would get misinformation. So in trying to put out accurate information, it was the, it was that hard then to find out what was really you know what was really happening, um, or or what was true or what wasn't true. Uh, and when all my children decided to uh, keep Cindy around for all that time, it was pretty great be it, because the life expectancy of people then was two to three years. And that's how long we told that story in about two and a half years. So it was a very sort of realistic view of what someone's life might be if, if, that, if that were to happen to them then. Describe the character of Cindy Parker. Um, Cindy Parker was very poor and uh, had been married to a man who was an intravenous, an illegal intravenous drug user. Um, and he had gotten AIDS, uh, but no one knew because he died of a drug overdose. No one knew that he had AIDS, including Cindy. And so she came to town and, um, and uh, after she'd been there for a while, she was a ha hairdresser. And after she'd been there for a while, then she found out that she had AIDS. Now, was she initially slated as a love interest for Stuart Chandler? No. No, that came that came along, at least not to my knowledge. Now, see, of course, I wasn't in on story meetings, so I don't know that for sure. But no, when I came, she was just going to, um, because she was only supposed to be there three to six months. I mean, I really think in the beginning it, they were just going to try to uh, try to deal with what this current issue was and uh, make people aware of it at all. What they did so beautifully was make people aware not just of the disease, but but make them aware in a way that um, brought it into into their lives, in it, like into their homes. This this is happening to people who have children. This is happening to people who could live next door to you, and this is happening to people who have uh, loves. And y you need to think of, you need to think about it that you need to think about it that way. That these whoever this is happening to, they have lives. They have real lives, and they have lives that go on, and they have to deal with you know, deal with whatever's happening to them. And when you tell a story like that for three years, a, a lot of things happened to Cindy aside from having AIDS. And that's what we got to see, was that it wasn't just she got AIDS one day and then everything in her life changed. She got AIDS one day, and then while she was still alive, she had to deal with all the other things that happened in her life, like falling in love. You know, do you fall in love with you while you're sick? Maybe you do. If you meet the right person, then you do. Um, so, so that was a that was a it was a very it was a very it was a very special story at a time in our nation when we needed to all rally together, um, and that definitely happened around that story. And all my children in ABC were very brave to take that on at that particular time, and I'm very proud to have been a part of that. Um, and work with all of those talented people. We got together every every month, and I promise, as the executive producer, this does not happen. Um, but we got together every month to discuss that story. Uh, we, the actors, the writers, the producers, uh, because it was we felt like we were trying to take on such a big thing and we wanted to be so accurate. We got together once a month to discuss what was happening in the story and and what was medically accurate and then how we wanted that portrayed and um, that's a lot of care for who, someone to devote. Who led those meetings? Agnes. Agnes. Agnes Nixon. <laughs> Agnes. Who she? Yeah, and um, who, who was the head writer at the time and you know so that's a that's a pr like I said that just doesn't happen. Uh, we Actors aren't Actors aren't allowed to usually to be part of that sort of process. We weren't getting to tell them what the story was. They just wanted us to understand the gravity with which they 
you know, they took this sort of mission they had taken on. And I know from the letters I got, which were literally thousands, that um, we, it, it was helpful at, at a time when, our, when everyone needed a way to be able to let that issue be part of their life. Um, all my children in ABC accomplished that because I got thousands of letters of people saying, you know, I just found out my uncle has AIDS. I just found out my son has AIDS. I just found out my mother has AIDS. Um, I wouldn't have been able to deal with it, but I had watched you guys deal with it, and now I can. Or I learned all about it, and, you know, now I'll let my son play with the kid at school. That, that's, that's, a big, that's a big deal. They're, they took on a lot and handled it incredibly well.